What's up and welcome to Hack My Growth. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how to forecast site traffic using Google Colab. Are you looking to grow your business but you're not sure where to start? That's where we come in. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If this is your first time watching or maybe been watching a while and you haven't yet hit that like button, please do so now and don't forget to subscribe. So forecasting traffic can be helpful, especially when you're a marketer if you want to project forward and help either your clients or your internal team better understand what the potential might be moving forward. So we can forecast site traffic with the help of Google Colab. And in order to do this, we're going to need a few things. First, Colab account. Second, a CSV with click data. These two things are really all you need. And I'm going to show you how you can set these up inside of Colab in order to start projecting or forecasting your data. Now, this is very important. This is a forecasting prediction. So make sure the people you're sharing it with understand that. This is not something we can promise. This is just running a simple model to help us understand what may be possible based on past data. All right, so let's jump over to Google Colab and we'll get going. So the first thing you're going to need is a Google Colab account. It's free. If anybody has a Google account, you go ahead and sign up with Google Colab. To use this uh, Colab file, you're going to need to go to File and then Save, Copy, and Drive. That's going to save this into your drive, and then you can make any of the updates and edits that you need to make. So the first thing we have to do is install some libraries. So in this case, we're using a library called Profit. This library is provided from the people over at Meta, and it is the forecasting library uh, that's going to run within this Python Colab file. So go ahead and hit run. We're also going to have to import a few other things like pandas, uh, numpy, and then from profit, we're going to import, of course, profit. So we'll go ahead and hit that. Now we need data. And in order to have the right data uh, in the right formats, we need to make sure that we download it into a CSV. For this example, I'm going to be using data from Google Search Console. You can also use data from um, other sources, whether it be analytic sources or things of that nature, just make sure that when you do that, you have two columns, dates, and in this case, clicks, because we're using clicks as, uh, as part of the calls later on down here. So just make sure that you put these two headers in if you don't. Now, if we do it with Google Search Console, we'll be good to go. So I just want to go over to search results. And then for this instance, I actually want to pull all the data for the last 16 months. That way I've got a long data set. Uh, I just want to pull the clicks and I can hit export. Now you can put it in Google Sheets, Excel, but we need it in a CSV format. So I'm going to go ahead and click download CSV. The only two columns that we're going to need are dates and clicks. So I can get rid of all the rest of this data and then I can save as, and I'll go ahead and put it on my desktop. And FC, for forecast and dates, save. Now that I've removed these two and I've got my dates filter, I'm just gonna to go to the end just to make sure they didn't do any kind of totaling here on me and they didn't, that's great. So I can go ahead and close this out. And I'm heading back over now to Google Colab. What I wanna do is run this cell. This cell is going to install something that's gonna allow us to import files. So we go ahead and choose those files that we wanna import. We will go to our desktop and pick out the dates file. And as you can see here, it's going to run the file and it looks like it all came in the way we want it to. So what's happening is it's uploading the CSV and it's taking the CSV and converting it into a data frame that we've called traffic. Traffic.head just allows us to see the top. Now we can look at the clicks over time. And so here we go. Here's the clicks uh, over time and we can see that data in here. And now it's in reverse order. Uh, if we can look at this one. So we actually want to project going forward and not project going backwards. So what do we need to do there? We need to actually flip that data source that's coming in from um, Search Console. So there's a couple ways to do it. We could do it here in, in Python, but in case you are not familiar with Python, here's an easy way to do it. You open up this sheet one more time, then you add a filter and then I am going to do ascending. And now I've resaved this data ascending. So I don't have to worry about going into Python and doing anything. And I save it. Now, 
When you do this inside of CodeLab, it's really good to go over here and actually delete this data source. You do that by finding the file and then go ahead and just deleting that file because we're going to replace this file and we want the traffic to be right. If you do what I did and you want to rechange that file uh, into ascending, you go and run this cell one more time. It's going to go ahead and open up this. We can find that date again. And now you're going to see it flipped. Now we're looking at 2022 into 2023. So this is going to give us the right forecasting direction. So that's really important that you have your dates set up correctly. Anytime you're using artificial intelligence, anytime you're using modeling, garbage in, garbage out should be your motto. So now that we've got this into the right format, we're going to go and convert the columns into FB profit names. This is uh, just something I do to kind of follow the documentation so I don't have to change a bunch of things. All right. So here we've got holidays and we're using these holidays and I'm going to put air quotes on that, even though you can't see me do it to put in Google core updates. This allows us to know that there's been different changes to the algorithm that will affect our data. So I've put in these as uh, core updates and you can see all the way up to 2023. So we're up to date on these core updates and we can run this. And now we know that there is potential changes due to core updates. This just, again, informs our model a little bit better as it's doing some projections. Now we are going to hit the button, which allows this to do some forecasting for us and hit this little button here and then hit this button here. So what is this doing? So looking at our date ranges here is DS. Then it's giving us what the prediction is as well as the upper and the lower bounds of that prediction. So when we're doing a prediction, we'll have something in the middle, which is kind of the average, but we're also going to have something called the upper and the lower bounds, which say it could potentially be as high as this and as low as this. It just allows us to forecast more correctly instead of assuming that something's going to go perfect. Now we can actually save this data. If you want to save the forecasting data and you can run in another program, or we can use these cool graph figures inside of uh, profit. Now, as you can see, the data goes up and down. Each one of these black dots is a data point. And along this data point, it's trending. And it was trending this forecast uh, in a negative direction. So if we were forecasting down and we continue on the same trajectory as we are right now, we're actually looking at forecasting a negative growth for this specific site or the specific marketing campaign that we're running at the time. So this would be very good if we're going to say, how well is this going to perform? We'd say, well, it looks like it's actually going to perform bad, so we need to change our approach. This is where it can be really helpful when you help clients or people within your agency or in your business understand the effectiveness of what's going on. Again, we can do it in a different plot form, uh, which shows the same kind of data, just in a different format. Again, here, it could be as low as this or as horrible as this one. Those are all the different options available to us. And it's projecting out uh, all the way to next year uh, and as well to like the middle of, of next year. So we're doing a quite a bit of a projection out that gives us an idea of what's going on. Um, now you can also make these charts interactive. So for instance, I could run this cell now uh, and I can look at one week or one month or six months or one year or all the data as it is here. I can also zoom in with these charts here. Again, this is just gonna allow you to see trend over the historical data, and then using that data to inform the direction you're headed. So again, in this instance, this would be something that would raise a red flag, and you might wanna go back to your team and say, hey, let's change what we're doing and, and adjust in order to see more of a positive swing on things. So this is what it looks like when the data is headed in the wrong direction. Again, if we want to pull in this data, I've got other data sets we can look at. You want to restart, go back over here to the file and upload data, choose files, and I can upload this data from another campaign. Now we can run the forecasting here. Now here we see a different trend of data. We see the data actually seeing a very big positive jump. Uh, we'll go through the exact same thing, run all the cells again. You need to run all the cells when you're processing this data. And then we'll run the forecasting data. I'm not gonna run this one because I don't need to download it. But now we can get back to these charts and say, all right, so we saw a massive jump right around this time. If this trend continues, 
we, we are looking at a potential of seeing anywhere between minimal growth, maybe even some loss, all the way up to some positive, really, really positive growth. Again, we can run these charts here and use the interactive section, which is really nice because now you can zoom in and go, okay, well, what, what was actually happening around this time frame here where we saw this massive jump? You know, not looking so good here in December and then bam, January hit and we saw some growth and now we've been on some steady incline ever since then. Again, this can help you set some realistic predictions and a client's like, uh, if we continue on this trend, what can we expect to see? Uh, you know, you go by next year, we're looking at an average of 18 to 1900 clicks per day. Uh, and that's, that's going to be much better than where we are right now, almost a thousand more clicks per day. Just allows you to do some positive as well as negative uh, trends where you can actually start to predict and forecast what may happen going forward. Now, again, it's important. Make sure you have the date set in the right, uh, in the right order. Uh, make sure the people that you're sharing this with understand that these are simply predictions, nothing more, nothing less. So I hope you found this video helpful today. Go ahead and check out this site forecast Python file within Google Colab. Make a copy for yourself. Uh, use your data. I'd love to hear what you come up with if you find this helpful. And if there's anything else that you might find helpful and like us to do a video on, please comment on that below as well. Thanks again for watching and until next time, happy marketing.